guys and welcome to this week's video. We're going to be doing something that I didn't have from my childhood. It's not something that I particularly thought to ask for, but it is something that I, I have not dabbled with, I'm not familiar with, I, I'm aware of. Um, I didn't have any friends that had one of these either, so I'm really excited to actually uh, use an Easy Bake Oven for the first time. I that probably sounds really dumb, but I am super excited to open this up and actually try it out. We're gonna actually make something today. Um, I pulled you guys on whether you wanted mini whoopie pies or the red velvet strawberry cakes, and it looks like the mini whoopie pies won the poll. So that is what we're gonna be making today is mini whoopie pies with an easy bake oven, the ultimate edition. I bought this not sponsored from Walmart for like $45. Your refill kits, your your oven doesn't come with the, the kit, so you have to buy these separately. And they were like $8 um, a pack. So not sponsored, just trying out because it sounds like fun. So let's get into it. Easy Bake Ultimate Oven, eight years or older, adult supervision required. No assembly required. It uses 120 volts, AC only 100 watts, 60 hertz, light bulb. Okay, so baking basics. No matter what you're baking, you'll always use your oven the same way. So follow these steps to ensure great results. Preheat the Easy Bake Ultimate Oven for 20 minutes. When ready to bake, place baking pan in the baking slot. Use the pan pusher to push pan into baking chamber. Stop when the baking line on the handle lines up with the bottom edge of the baking slot as shown. Do not use your hands to push the pan in and do not leave pan tool in the oven because this will melt, it's just plastic. Look inside the oven to make sure the metal doors are closed on both sides. If one door is slightly open, use the pan tool to push it shut. If the pan is sticking out on the other side, you'll need to push the pan all the way through, you know, step three, take it out, step four, and then start again. So when baking time is done, use pan pusher to move pan all the way through the cooling chamber. Be careful because the pan is hot. Allow pan to cool in the chamber for five minutes. When cooling time is done, use the spatula to remove pan from the oven. Turn off oven and unplug when finished baking. Wait for oven to cool, then wipe clean with a damp cloth. And that is it. So Oh, so there's only an on or an off switch. It doesn't tell you how hot it is. Um, oven top and interior surface do not touch. Hot pans, food, careful. So we're just gonna set this here. This is the in slot. This is the out. It says that, you know, it's gonna get pretty hot as it heats up. And then we've got our little uh, pan pusher tool side. These are the arrows that it was talking about earlier. And then this is to, I guess, actually like scrape or whatever so we've got that and then we have our little pan which i'm not sure if this is gonna work with it i would think it would okay so it's gonna be two chocolate brownie mixes and two vanilla frosting mixes so this actually has two packages in it that's pretty cool adult supervision required guys so just be careful Let's see what our ingredients are, what we got to do to make these whoopie pies. Okay, so we will also need the Easy Bake Ultimate Oven Pan Tool, baking pan, okay, so that's what we're gonna use. Measuring spoons, mixing bowls and spoons, cooking spray, wax paper, plastic mat, scissors are optional, and flour is optional. Okay, so please read the Easy Bake Ultimate Oven instructions thoroughly before making these mixes. We did that. Make sure children wash their hands before using the mixes. Hand wash and dry baking pan before using for the first time and after baking. So I'll go do that real quick. Okay, so we're gonna make the cake batter. So we just need some water and we need to bake it. And then for the frosting, we also just need water. So I'm gonna go grab some water and then we will continue making this. Okay, so we're back with some water. We're back with the other things that you're gonna need. You're gonna need um, a mixing bowl for the cake mix and a mixing bowl for the frosting mix. Got a little stir to spread on the frosting. And then you just need water basically for these mixes. So pour one chocolate brownie mix and one and a half teaspoons of water into a bowl. 
stir and press the mixture together until it is thick and doughy. Okay. This is just brownie. Brownie mint. Sounds really good. Okay, so one and a half teaspoons of water. One and a half. It's not very much, but all right. And it just says, press the mixture together until it is thick and doughy. So that's what we will just keep doing. Might put a little bit more water in, but we'll see. Because I know brownies are so deceiving because of how thick they get. It smells good, it smells like chocolate, so that's a good sign. That was the, I think the thing I thought is I was like, this is going to be disgusting. This is going to be gross. Like, I don't know. I was like, it can't be that good. Can it? Like, I was just like, this is probably just some gimmick that they're trying to get kids to be excited about. You know, like I had such a, like a, a hipster mindset as a kid. I'm like, nah, I don't, I don't think this is going to be good at all, but we shall see. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Um, I'm going to use this. It's supposed to like mold together, dough together, or, like balls or something like that. It's just pretty powdery. I feel like it needs just a little bit more water. Like just a bit. See, it says flour is optional, but it says to flour, sprinkle flour on your hands and roll the mixture into a ball. Split the ball in half to make two equal pieces. Okay, so we're only going to make... Now split each of the pieces into two smaller pieces. Roll, into, roll each piece in the palms of your hands until smooth around about an inch thick. And it seems like our hands are just going to get messy just because... Okay, now, see, now it's kind of like pressing together and forming, forming something. Yeah, this is a lot messier than I was thinking it was going to be, so I had like, thinking about like my kids making something with this, like kind of annoying. All right, now that we made a mess and we've got our dough roll, it says to split it into two equal pieces and then split it into smaller pieces after that. It shows six, but I think I'm only going to be able to do four. Press each ball down to the palm of your hand to make six flat cakes. If needed put a drop of water on your finger and smooth out any cracks stuff is sticky i'm so like i guess i wasn't expecting it being to be like this i'm gonna have to go wash my hands after Ugh. freaking a mess okay so <laughs> i recommend flour i guess okay so then time to bake uh, baking time is 12 minutes for this. So there's our cute little chocolate pies. Um, and it looks like it goes sideways and it goes in. And remember, we don't use our hands. 
we use the little thing and it pushes it in there. And then we go as far as that. And then you look to make sure that it's closed and it is. Okay, so there's that. So it's cooking in there. So for 12 minutes, we're gonna pause real quick. I'm gonna clean my hands. We're gonna make the frosting and the cake should be ready. So right back. Okay, so we got the station all cleaned back up so we can make our frosting. I can actually smell the like brownie whoopie pies cooking. So that smells pretty good. All right, let's make this frosting and then those should be ready to be pulled out. So it only takes 12 minutes for them to break, to bake, or kind of like just warm up, heat up. So let's make this frosting. So pour one vanilla frosting mix and one and a half teaspoons of water into a bowl. Stir until smooth and then set aside. Just hate when I open up the bags and the stuff gets stuck at the top, you know? Like I want all the powder to fall to the bottom of the pouch. I feel like you're supposed to use the whole thing, right? And I hope that because I made four instead of six, that that's okay. We'll see, right? Who knows? Okay, and then one and a half teaspoons. So there's one and then a half. You just slowly incorporate the powder into the water mix until it's fully mixed in. And I can really actually smell those um, brownies now. This is more like icing, not frosting. So I'm hoping the more powder that we mix in that the more it turns into Keep making a mess, keep mixing in powder, keep making a mess. Oh my gosh, you know what it smells like? It smells like um the frozen kid cuisine meals where you get like the, the brownie. If you had like the chicken nuggets, macaroni and cheese, corn, and then the brownie, it smells like that brownie. That actually like smells like my childhood. I'm kind of excited now. I was like, oh man, this is kind of a pain in the ass. Like I hate making a mess like this is freaking ridiculous. Like I completely understand why um, parents wouldn't get this for their kids because what a mess, right? It's like ridiculous. Okay, so the frosting is all mixed up and it's like frosting. Okay, so then these should be just about ready make sure we check our time one to one and a half minutes left so overall like so far like having to get that already like it wasn't a lot it just was messy it was it was a lot of mess so I'm wondering if there's like an easier way of doing this like obviously this is my first time so like I don't know the best tips and tricks but kind of messy. So once the cakes are ready, we're gonna pull them and then you have to let them cool for about five minutes. So that way they're easy to be handled. Then we will actually spread on our frosting mixture and then put the cakes together to make sandwiches. And then that's awesome. And it says to save half the frosting for your next batch. Repeat steps one through 10 to make the other half of your mix. Oh, so you can actually make like, a lot you can make two batches so that's pretty cool so that's why they give you two two packages but um, we're gonna put these together and then taste them and review it all together hopefully it turns out good Oh yeah, they are beautiful. 
Okay, and not trying to use our hands, but this is really difficult. This is like skills. Okay, there we go. So yeah, definitely like little kid using this, like gotta be super careful. Okay, and then make sure to turn it off, the light on the front. It's off, so it's it's not on anymore. <laughs> and then don't touch it. Let it cool down. Leave it over there. Okay. So we're going to wait five minutes for these to cool down, and then we're going to ice them. Ooh, yeah. Okay, so it's been five minutes, so now we can go ahead and make these little whoopie pies. Off the tray. Okay, we're gonna put our frosting on. There's one little whoopie pie. Man, they are hot. I'm kind of surprised. This one, a little bit more frosting. And another beautiful whoopie pie. All right, and there we go, our beautiful little whoopie pies. I know it said to make three, but eh, whatever. So now that we've made it, let's give it a try. Okay, so first, right off the bat, like just straight sugar. That's all it is, just straight sugar. Um, but it doesn't taste bad, you know? It's just like, I'm really sensitive to sugar right now. But um, flavor-wise, like chocolatey, it's like fudgy inside, it's hot. So like, it was like, you know, cooked in the oven, even though this technically isn't an oven. Um, the frosting tastes good though the chocolateness of it like actually it's pretty cool it's just thinking about if I was a kid and I had this like man what a mess I would have made man just thinking about all of that that affects right so the fruits of our labor it's definitely brownie like a hundred percent Great pick, guys, for picking the uh, whoopie pies. They're like actually pretty great. All right, there you have it, guys. We've officially tried out an easy bake oven. Honestly, I will probably like use it again. I'll probably make the red velvet and strawberry cakes since that was the one that you guys decided to not vote for. We did the mini, mini whoopie pies. Mini whoopie pies, I actually really liked. They're definitely like brownie chocolate flavor. Frosting was good. It wasn't too hard to do everything. It's just messy. It's a lot of mess. Um, and I know they say that flour is optional, but if you're gonna be mixing those, then you need to like have flour on your hands because like what a mess. Overall though, it was actually really enjoyable. I really enjoyed doing the entire experience. I wouldn't mind having one of these as a kid, but also like would I have used it all the time? No, especially since like buying these packs, like yeah, you get two, but then like, you know, thinking about your parents buying this, like $8 for this pack, like, okay, a box of brownies is actually how much at Walmart, like just brownies, right? And your parents would have to make them. So I don't know, like the concept of it is fun, but I just don't, I didn't see having one of this, these in my childhood and I still don't. I, after actually using one in that, it, I just don't see it, but it was fun and I, can kind of think of a lot of creative ideas for using this to do like miniature foods, like food challenges, like can I cook a steak in here, something like that. And I am highly considering doing those types of videos because I say that I can make anything in a microwave. So this is technically a, a mini microwave, but it's in an oven form. So if you guys are interested in anything like that, 
just drop your ideas down in the comment section. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If there's anything else that you want to have me review from childhood that maybe you missed or something that you really enjoyed that if I haven't uh, been made aware of it, I'm totally down with giving it a go and trying it out. So leave those in the comment section below as well. Thanks so much for watching guys. Remember, I love every single one of you. I hope that you have a great day. Remember, spread kindness to yourself and to others, and I'll see you in my next video.